Hello everyone, thanks for joining us today for the Digital 1010 Captura workshop on how to scale your law firm using Google Ads and a modern intake solution. By the end of this meeting, you're gonna learn a few things. First, you'll understand why your practice should focus its advertising dollars on Google Ads, formerly Google AdWords. You'll also understand why you should prioritize your call campaigns and how they'll actually help you scale your firm. And then finally, you'll understand how to track your ROI on any of the leads brought in using a modern intake solution. Some general housekeeping for today's meeting. Uh, please just close any social platforms, turn off your TV, make sure that you have some pen and paper ready because we're gonna go through a lot of things uh, today. Again, this is not a get rich quick gimmick. Um, this is not just click a button and you get paid. You will have to do some work on the back end uh, to close some of these prospects. So hopefully you have a great intake team um, ready to handle all of the calls and emails that we'll be bringing to you. Uh, th lastly, this is not for people who are only in it to help themselves, lining their own pockets without actually helping those they come in contact with. Um, like I just mentioned, we're going to be bringing a lot of people to um, your firm, and we hope that you respect each one of those cases as if it was your own, um, because again, uh, we're here to help you, and we hope that you are in it to help those you come in contact with. Uh, this is our partner for the uh, workshop, and unfortunately, we're going through some technical difficulties. Um, so Denny will jump on uh, via phone here shortly. Uh, but as you can see, he's highly accredited uh, partner of Captura uh, and able to help you with any of your intake solutions. Uh, and I'm the CEO and founder of Digital 1010. Um, I started Digital 1010 in 2014. In that time, we became a two-time Addy Award-winning agency. Recently, we were awarded uh, UpCity's top advertising agency as well as their top content marketing agency. Um, we are a Google partner uh, and we in the past have worked with brands uh, such as Coca-Cola, Graco, Lynx Magazine, uh, Reynolds America, Mellow Yellow, Snyder's Lance, and more. So let's get into the actual reason that we're here and talk about the average law firm. The average law firm based on our uh, our research and the companies that we currently work with spends about $5,000 on advertising every month with larger firms spending closer to $500,000 a year on advertising. Generally, those funds are spent in things like TV, radio, print, um, networking events, but all of those things uh, make it hard for you to actually qualify your results. It, may, it you know a person could be listening to a radio ad and drive by a billboard, but you never know which one actually got them to call you. Um, so that's kind of the reason that we believe traditional marketing limits your ability to scale. A 2016 study by Nielsen, and Nielsen uh, basically does a lot of reporting on uh, TV, radio, and print um, statistics, stated that only 30% of viewers who saw a TV ad ha had remembered enough to be able to tell somebody about that advertiser. And even less, eight, only 8% 8 who saw a billboard were able to tell someone enough information um, about the person that they saw on that billboard. Huge, you know, huge numbers left on the table. And if you think about it, in the six seconds it took you to read this, 432,000 Google searches happened in the U.S. alone. 72,000 every second and 2.16 million every 30 seconds. I have some stats pulled up just looking at the law firm or a lawyer niche, 15.7 million searches happen every single day. Every single day, 15.7 million uh, searches are happening for people who need your services. Um, now, as we start to define the, the types of, of keywords, uh, it actually goes up. So general blanket terms, lawyer, uh, family lawyer, things like that, 15.7 million searches. And then if they add some kind of value, such as, you know, a free consultation, uh, you add another 250 plus thousand searches. And then if you add a specific phrase as, 
you know, a type of injury or a type of criminal process that, that they need help with, that adds another 70 plus thousand searches. So you can see that there is a lot going on when it comes to Google and how people engage with it. So why aren't more law firms investing in Google Ads? Well, some of the reasons that we get is, I've tried it before, but I had no luck. You know, it's like throwing water uh, or, or money into the ocean, so to speak. I've had so many other marketing things going on, and I really don't know where my clients come from. Or my ad person says TV and social media is where I should spend my, my marketing dollars. Or it costs too much money. Maybe our firm has never done it that way. And lastly, no one clicks on those ads. I'm sure a lot of you probably thought a lot of these things, maybe even told your previous or current marketer uh, some of these, these reasons as well. And your intuition was correct. You know, Google ads can be difficult. If you don't do it right, you will lose a lot of money. But if you understand that it does take time, proper planning and proven marketing execution, coupled with a, a modern legal intake solution to track the prospect's journey from the lead to billable client, you will be able to scale your practice. And at the end of this process, um, you know, we'll talk about uh, if what we do is a good fit for you in helping you scale your, your, your business. So as we start to look at industry averages for the legal field, and, and I'll send these out as well because I know that they're a bit small, um, but the top half of each of these uh, images is for in regards to search and the cost uh, that it takes for a search click. And the bottom is for display. So uh, each of these are averages based on the different industries that Google tracks, whether it's healthcare, retail, um, so on and so forth. But what we're going to focus on is the law profession. So each of these that are highlighted in black. So the first thing we look at is the average click-through rate. So the average click-through rate for the legal uh, profession ranges from 0.45% up to 1.35%. And what that means is for every person that comes to uh, or sees your ad, half the time they're going to click the, the ad. You know, if it does well, half the time they'll, they'll click the ad. And then if it does extremely well, then yeah, they'll, you'll get a lot more clicks. Now, clicks don't necessarily mean conversions. And that's when we start to go into step two, the cost per acquisition. How much does it cost for them to actually do something on your site, whether it's an email to you asking questions, looking for a consult or a phone call? Well, the legal profession is the highest out of all industries that are tracked amongst Google. Um, with the average CPA about $135, almost $136. Um, on a, a, a low end for the display side, uh, it's about $61, almost $62. And then your overall conversion rate uh, for law firms is anywhere from 1% to about 4.35% on the search end of things. If you're within those numbers, then great. And if you're not within those numbers, then we really need to reassess and uh, uh, figure out what we need to do to, to generate more high quality leads. So as you start to look at that, uh, that number $135 cost per acquisition, you'll see that based on the types of terms people are clicking, um, you will pay more. So for generic terms like lawyer or lawyer near me, it's going to be quite expensive. But th that doesn't mean that those people are necessarily going to convert into a paying customer. They just might be looking for information. Um, they may not necessarily know what exactly they need at that point if they're looking, let's say, for a family lawyer. Um, you know, so there's a lot of ambiguity with the types of terms that people are using on Google. So the more tailored and the more specific uh, in terms of the type of phrase that you have, such as this long-term phrase, brain injury, lawyer-free consult, 
This person searching for that term is more than likely looking to acquire a lawyer. They have some kind of a problem. But somebody who's just looking for a brain injury lawyer is probably looking for research, maybe for college, maybe for high school, maybe for anything. I mean, you just don't know. Um, so utilizing those long tail uh, terms is going to limit uh, eliminate the unnecessary clicks to your page and that unnecessary cost. And it is an absolute myth that people don't click on ads. So this report was done through lawyermarketing.com. Um, they had a subset of 500 uh, people who they had asked, when you search for a lawyer on Google, how do you decide on what to click? And more than 75% said that they would click on anything that was relevant to their search. Um, and that's true. I mean, think about yourself. If it is relevant to your search, you don't really pay attention to whether or not it's an ad. Um, you just click it, and then once you get to the page, you signify as to whether or not it is relevant to you. Now, as we start to think about law firms and how to scale, um, we're going to try to eliminate some of those clicks to your pages and, and get more direct conversations going because that's the best way for you to, to close deals is over the phone, not necessarily through an email chain. So how do I use Google Ads to scale? That's the question of today. So in a typical AdWords account, the structure looks similar to this, right? You have a few ad campaigns. Within the ad campaigns, you have ad groups. And then beneath that, you have keywords, text for your ads, and then landing pages. So if you think about it from a top-down situation, at the AdWords account in this context is for personal injury lawyers. The campaign, campaign one to the left, my left, um, would be in regards to motor vehicle accidents. And then campaign two would be in regards to workplace injuries. Both personal injury, two different types of campaigns. Now, beneath the motor vehicle uh, ac accidents, uh, we have things like big trucks or just general auto accidents. And then beneath the ad campaign for workplace injuries, we have things like the spinal cord injuries or an orthopedic uh, injury. Maybe they broke a bone, right? So you see how we start to structure these accounts so that we can pinpoint uh, what's working, what's not working, where you're making money, and, and then we can grow on that. Now, there's a lot more that goes on in that process, and even in this as like I was saying, we're gonna focus right now on this lower section. Uh, and there's a lot more that goes on here, but the short version of this scalable process looks something like this, right? We focus on one keyword, on one ad, and on one landing page. Because if all of those things work together, you're more likely to generate the lead. Now, when it comes to landing pages, obviously we'll look at setting up some remarketing and pixel um, targeting so that anybody who leaves without taking action, um, we serve them different types of ads. So they come to our landing page, they click on the page, they read our information, they decide not to, uh, for whatever reason, call or email uh, the firm. Well, then what we would do is leave, they leave the page and go to social platforms or continue to do research on Google. At that point, we would start to serve them different types of, of, of content based on the page that they viewed. So if they came to your personal injury uh, uh, for auto accidents landing page and they left and went to, let's say, Facebook, then they would see maybe a case study blog post about a auto accident that we handled and was, were able to um, acquire a large sum of money for our client. We don't necessarily have to directly sell to these people anymore because they're, they're somewhat aware of our brand and business. Now we have to re basically reassess what they currently know about us and drive their consideration factor down a bit 
so that they actually book a call with us. And that happens through that secondary piece of content. Now, as these things are happening, you have a lot of opportunity to kind of lose the, the customer. So what we try to tell clients is to focus on call campaigns. And call campaigns are gonna be a direct, uh, uh, is gonna be a direct action allowing the customer or prospect to see based on the same keywords that they're searching for to see your ad and rather than going to your landing page being able to call you directly right to call the firm directly eliminating the process of all of the back and forth and additional information so that you can close the deal a lot faster and call campaigns will scale your practice because timing and intent are everything. I mean, think about it. If somebody got into a horrible accident, what are they gonna do? Not get on their desktop, right? They're gonna get on their cell phone, whatever they have in front of them. If somebody's leaving a domestic, their home from a, for a domestic violence case, what's the first thing they're gonna do? Probably not get on their tablet in their living room. They're gonna leave the house and jump on their cell phone. Or if someone's in a workplace accident, they probably don't have access to uh, uh, a, a desktop computer. Same thing goes for if they're in the hospital. The probably the only means that they have to get in touch with you is via cell phone. So you have to remember that the people who need you the most are probably going to find you via their cell phone. And that's most of you probably are going to to notice. And, and what we have based on statistics that we've run. Um, is that 85% of your clients, the people who actually become your clients, find you via mobile. A recent study, um, a marketing trends study that was put out earlier this year, uh, stated that there's almost a $7 billion gap in terms of what could be spent via mobile advertising and what is being spent. Meaning, right now, there are so many people using mobile phones for research, uh, for social engagement, and for all different types of things that, and there's still space for people to put ads in those places without it feeling overwhelming. You'll notice this TV uh, benchmark is, is pretty much average. And the reason for that is, if we start to add more advertisements to TV, we'll have less time to actually watch the shows that we love. So what, what are TV stations and, and, and broadcasters now starting to do? They're starting to move to social, shorter form content, um, because they understand that their users are going online via mobile. And the same study from Lawyer Marketing asked those 500 contestants or uh, uh, participants, if you were to use the internet to find a lawyer, what device would you use? And you, you can see more than half said smartphone, smartphone with desktop or desktop laptop computer. I mean, it, it's clear to see that now more people today have access to mobile phones, smartphones than ever before. And that's gonna continue to grow. So as we start to think about your firm and, and who we're trying to target and how we're trying to target them, you know, what we always tell our, our uh, practices is that we need to be hyper specific when it comes to targeting. And that means to focus on 10 to 15 miles around your office. Now, if you have multiple offices, obviously it's around each office to help drive traffic for each one of the locations, but really focusing on 10 to 15 miles around your location is going to get you the most value because it's going to give people the most access to you the fastest. And, and that's the reason for that. So a few do's and don'ts when you start to think about your advertising across Google and its platforms. So the, let's start with the do's, the budget split. You, you need to initiate the 75-25 rule where 75% of your budget is spent on call campaigns and 25% is spent on landing page conversion campaigns. You can set up specific call only campaigns the same way that you set up your search campaigns, but 
just to drive the calls. And while you're doing that, like we just mentioned briefly, you need to ensure that you're utilizing your local extensions so that, you know, people who are around your office are able to find you the fastest. Because you're going to be getting such uh, an influx of calls, you need to make sure that you have a 24-7 call answering service in place to ensure that these people are getting either spoken to right away or called back almost immediately. And then finally, you need to make sure that you track everything using uh, a system such as Captora's. You know, I can say this until I'm blue in the face. We can bring you all the high quality leads you can afford or handle, but none of it makes any uh, uh, difference if you're not able to qualify the value of those leads through a system like Captora. So we're gonna do a great job, bring you lots of calls, bring you lots of emails. You guys are gonna do a great job at closing those calls and emails and turning them into billable clients. And the way you'll be able to track that is through a Captora system. <clears throat> and then a few don'ts, you know, don't spread your budget too thin, reaching for multiple practice areas. Start with the one, 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 one keyword, one landing page, one ad group, and then grow as you start to see success. Don't mix all of your keywords across multiple ad groups because you don't have the funds potentially to, to set up the second ad groups or third ad groups. Uh, and you think that it's going to bring you a few extra dollars. It's not. It's going to muddy the water and it's going to eliminate your ability to hone in on what's working and what's not. Don't write generic ads or landing page copy because people will read through that stuff. Make sure that it's authentic. Make sure that <clears throat> you're showing things that give value to the prospect. And don't create generic or umbrella landing pages for all your, your campaigns. Like we had discussed originally in regards to the architecture of the personal injury campaign, there should be a landing page for each of those ad groups so that you can really hone in on the success that you've had um, so that when people are visiting those pages and see that success, they feel more compelled to, to sign up. And then don't focus every ad that you have on free consultation or a case review. Some people are not necessarily looking for a free consultation. They are looking for uh, a, a person who is going to bring them the most value for their case or bring them the most closure for what they've been dealing with over, you know, however long they've been dealing with. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where free consultations and case reviews are going to bring you quite a bit of traffic but they're not everything, so don't treat them as if they are. And again, just to reiterate, do not neglect your intake process, you know, uh, for being able to handle the calls right away, follow up right away, that is all very important, and we'll go through that a little bit more. So as we start to look at what ads look like, what uh, some good ads and bad ads look like, let me see if I can zoom this in just a bit more. So here's a couple of examples of, of good ads or what we would like to call good ads. Uh, and the reason for that is, you know, they're to the point. So like this ad right here, it gives you direct access to call. It gives you opportunity to see what time they're open. You know, in most cases, I would say don't put the open until. I would say hire a call center, allow them to take the calls and schedule the appointments. What's good with some of these is that they also note that they, you know, you don't pay unless they get uh, uh, a win, which is obviously an incentive for, for a prospect. And here are some poorly done ads. And it's funny, so like this one, personal injury lawyer in Phoenix, it's bringing up ads for a lawyer in Jacksonville. Um, obviously, whoever their marketer is, is not doing a great job because they'll never close any of these deals um, when everything says Jacksonville. Uh, this one right here, this is another blanket statement type ad. Let the number one personal injury uh, lawyer fight to get your maximum settlement. Why are they the number one personal injury lawyer? It doesn't say anything about cases, one dollars received, uh, nothing along those lines. So people will read through that stuff. 
So when we talk about your landing pages, and again, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff going on uh, with landing pages and websites, and websites are great to have, but when it comes to generating leads, uh, you really want to focus on creating specific landing pages. And there's six steps to creating a, a successful landing page. Uh, first is a limited amount of navigation. Uh, so you're basically removing any leaks from the funnel. Uh, the only thing that a user needs to do when coming to your landing page, they need to click the hyperlink for your phone number. They need to click the form submission or they need to leave the page. <clears throat> they don't need to go to your website to read more information. They don't need to be able to go to blog posts or any of that other stuff. You really want them to do one of two things, call you or email you, and that's about it. Um, make sure you have clear call to actions and a driven benefit uh, in all of your copy. Uh, we use the uh, focus relevance benefits uh, terms, and you guys can read a little bit into that, but really, each headline should have one goal, one topic. You should be very specific in regards to what your call to action is. If you want them to call for a free uh, consultation or a case review, um, you need to make sure that they understand your USP and what you're trying to get across to them. Um, because if all of those things miss, you've missed the lead. Um, the presentation of the page should be short and to the point. You shouldn't have more than one scroll. If you have super long pages, you'll end up losing customers. Um, the pages need to be branded and professional. Uh, logos, uh, you know, high up on the page. Um, make sure that you have a picture of yourself, uh, something, uh, or your team, depending on how many people are in the firm. All of those things help make it and the the page of the business feel more personal, more real. Um, and then social proof is needed. Things like testimonials and reviews. Now I'm not saying put 25 or 30, but you do need to have some social proof on there to show these customers that you are credible, that other people have used you in the past. And that leans into the final statement. You know, you want to make sure that you include any credible indicators, uh, affiliations, accolades, years of operation, things of that matter. So just a couple of examples of landing pages that don't really do that well. And, and this first one right here is, you know, the copy is just hard to read. It's really small. There is no phone number. Um, you know, prominent on the page. She gives you a little bit of information right here, but it's really just meh. That's what, that's what most people would say. They're like, I, this lady's really not going to fight for me. Uh, the second one is a landing, is not a landing page. It's a website that these people are driving, driving their, their clients to. Again, you know, having statements like this without any uh, validation or backup is, is really not smart. Um, having these additional links here also gives the opportunity for the user to click around and then leave. Um, you need more direct action. And the call to action uh, available 24-7 isn't really telling them anything. So uh, it's just not a great landing page. Uh, this is a, a great example of what a good landing page would look like. You know, it's very clear in regards to the area they serve. It's very clear in regards to the cases that they handle, that they're open 24-7. They have some, uh, some types of cases that they handle at the bottom. And they state you could speak with a lawyer instantly. So uh, this page's structure and layout uh, would definitely generate some pretty quality leads. And then one other thing that's really nice is that the phone number and talk to a lawyer now is high and prominent on the page. So here's an example of what our current clients, and this is up until December 1st, you know, they've spent, you know, just over 5,000 a month. They're generating great conversion rates. Our, our click-through rates are about average of what you would see, which on the front end, that's great. But really where we look at shining is in regards to our conversion rates and the cost per acquisition. You remember when we talked about the average, industry average cost per acquisition for the legal field is $135. We're about $50 uh, under that, which is awesome for our client. Every time one of these conversions comes through, he pays about $84. And the value of 
his clients range anywhere from or retainer and anywhere from 4,000 up to 7,000 and sometimes more. So you can see that there is real value in what we're able to do. Now, the way he qualifies those leads once we get past the, uh, the, the lead is uh, something that I'll let Denny talk a little bit more uh, about right now. Yeah, thanks, Michael, and uh, great job. I'll certainly hammer home, you know, some of those points that you mentioned. And uh, I know since I'm having technical difficulties myself, if there's anyone having any issues uh, hearing me, uh, let, let, let Michael know, I guess, because I won't be able to see the chat. So, uh, but moving forward, I, uh, I just really want to talk about that next piece of the puzzle and all this uh, that Michael was, was kind of pertaining to, and that's retaining clients on the intake side. And since we started Captor, as I mentioned, six years ago, Intake just in general has become a pretty hot topic in the marketplace. I believe it's because you know firms are finally starting to realize how intricate the intake process is within their, their marketing approach. Um, it's no longer necessarily looked at as a front end for the legal staff, but uh, you know, a true sales arm for your firm, which is exactly what it is. Um, and, and the number one item here is that your you know intake, including reception, is the very first impression that a potential client is going to have. Of what is kind of really what it's going to be like with working with your firm, and I'm sure you guys have seen the multiple case, the case studies out there that shows that a consumer makes a large portion of their buying decision within the first seven seconds of speaking with someone. So you know the staff on your intake side cer certainly should be on their game with making that initial call. Um, that also means, as I kind of mentioned, the sell side, don't be afraid to move intake away from your legal staff. It, it takes a completely different type of, of personality and focus for someone to handle, you know, that may be a difficult person on the front end and be able to separate, hey, this is a case that the, the, the firm wants to accept versus, oh, you know, this is going to be a person I kind of have to deal with on the case side. That shouldn't go into the decision-making processes on, on clients that you're signing up for your criteria. Um, and, and what certainly ties into the discussion today is, is how much or how great your marketing is means really absolutely nothing if you're unable to convert that client. So following up, qualifying, signing a client is all drastically different than managing a client's case. Um, so your staff process and, and certainly the systems you have should be focused solely on that piece of your business as opposed to trying to band-aid inadequate solutions that will certainly 100% equal up to lost cases. And we'll get into some uh, statistics on this in a bit, but the short of it is, is that you're not, if you're not using text messaging and e-sign together, you're, you're certainly getting left behind in today's market. Um, there's really no excuses for this anymore with the way consumers today leverage smartphones. Um, and last but certainly not least, uh, a focus here is to make it a point to improve your intake process uh, because you're certainly well, well ahead of the curve. I'm not going to be bashful by saying that, um, you know, in today's market, I, I see the good, bad, and the ugly among hundreds of law firms. And even if you're doing an, uh, an above average job at intake, uh, you're, you're ahead of your competition. So, and Michael, if you can move to the next slide. Uh, so I think we, we all have a, a general idea of how technology and the mindset of consumers has certainly changed over the past few years. But just to quickly review, uh, in the law firm setting, it used to be real simple. We you know, advertise in Yellow Book or on a billboard or TV. Uh, your phone rings and you schedule a consultation with a potential client. And then sometime later, you, you meet face-to-face -face and, and review the potential case with them. And, then, and they get them signed up. It was really that simple. Easy peasy. One, two, three. You know, market outside. Phone rings meet with them, sign them up. And on the next slide, uh, that's that's no more. Now you have to market, you know, pretty much everywhere to saturate it. But as Michael was showing earlier, there's a lot of benefits in leveraging uh, the majority of your marketing budget online. Uh, now that presents some problems for firms today with, uh, with the way that, uh, you know, you get those leads generated and how you're able to manage and follow up on those. Uh, so, you know, you can decide to do, you know, client claimant may decide to do some research online and contact you through your website or chat, or they may end up on a marketer site where the lead is sent to you through email. Uh, and even if they do decide to call, it may go to your after hours answering service, which you should have, by the way. But again, that's another email. And even if it does come to you directly, it may have been routed through a call tracking number for pay-per-click. Uh, so it's really a lot to keep up with. And, uh, and I'll show you on the next slide here that uh, we have valid proof. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh, well, this has got to be just a handful of firms that you guys have worked with, uh, if you're thinking that, you're probably falling into the bucket of the firms that really should pay attention because we did a case study that I alluded to before. Now, keep in mind on this that, one, these are very well-known firms around the country. 
with a long history in sizable intake departments. And two, we being in the industry know really what a firm is looking for when it comes to a good case. So that's the information that we submitted. So we, we chose 25 pretty prominent firms that we submitted web submissions to directly on their site. Now, 10 of those 25 at some point placed a phone call, meaning that over half of the firms didn't even call us back, didn't call us at all. And now those 10 that did place the phone call, only two groups placed a call within 15 minutes. Now, our goal, our goal standard and what we, what we kind of build into our application and what we train staff on is five minutes, which one firm actually did. One out of the 25 called within the first five minutes of the web inquiry being placed, um, and then another one called within the first 15 minutes. So two out of the 25 within the first 15 minutes. Now, both of those groups actually placed multiple phone calls throughout the next few days and sent emails as well. So they were, they were pretty good. They, they're on their game. Now, three other groups placed the call between 15 minutes and two hours. Uh, certainly a good bit longer than what we like to see, but at least they called. And then five of those groups placed phone calls before the end of the day. And out of those last eight, I mentioned the, the three in the first 15 to two hours and the five before the end of the day only placed one call the entire time. There was one of those groups that followed up the second time. Four firms decided that a call was just too much effort and just sent us some variation of an email asking us to call them. Obviously, if I'm the claimant and I wanted to do that, I would have just called. I wouldn't have submitted the web submission. Um, and then there was the 11 firms who didn't contact us at all, phone call, email. So for, you know, argument's sake, let's say that they really didn't like what we submitted. They should have at least in a marketing tone type email explaining why they didn't want, why they couldn't accept the case. So that me as the potential client, if I have another actual valid case in the future, that, uh, that I'm going to give them a call. Um, so, you know, really the short of it is it's pretty abysmal and, uh, and, and I have no reservations saying that the, these types of efforts go way beyond the 25 firm sample that I have here. And uh, if your firm would have fallen into the group that called right away and made multiple attempts, then certainly kudos to you because, as I mentioned before, you're well ahead of the curve. But uh, if you're not sure if you'd have fallen in or you know for certain that your firm uh, would most likely have not been within those two firms, then uh, certainly hopefully something that Michael and I discussed today even if it's one or two things out of the many that we talk about would be helpful for your group. Yeah. Um, it, so on to the, and it, it's, yeah, it, yeah, I was going to say, and th this is absolutely true. I mean, you know, y you guys really have to think about yourselves when you're talking, you know, about clients and customers, right? If you wanted somebody to take whatever case you had seriously, you need them to call you back within, you know, like you said, the five to 10 minute window outside of that, they probably already called, four other firms realistically four other firms so that intake that process of hey the call came in we need to have somebody follow back up to them uh, out to them is extremely it's what makes or breaks 90 percent of the firms that we deal with honestly yeah i i mean we'll keep hammering on guys because it's absolutely the truth it's it's definitely uh definitely a valid point and um, just to, to show some some stats on the follow up, it's not just you know things that we grab grab out of air. I mean, there's there's true studies on this, and, and I have some numbers here from an MIT study. Um, and so, from the last last slide from the case study, we can certainly easily see that one of the biggest issues is at the intake level is that lack of urgency. So, at our, our sister company, uh, ICE Intake Conversion Experts, we actually take stale leads from firms and follow up for them and qualify and retain for the client for the firm based on their criteria. So. We have actually made a business out of strictly on the fact that law firms don't follow up. And, you know, these metrics I'm showing here, as I mentioned, is from an MIT study on both of these. And I mentioned before that our, our goal standard is five minutes from when your firm receives a lead to when you need to be making that first attempt. Now, the graph on the right uh, shows that there is a 10 times decrease in your chance to reach and sign up a client when you do not call them within that first five minutes. And the middle metric on the left uh, states that your odds of converting a client when you are the first to reach them goes up 238%. Uh, that's almost a, a, a number that I can't even uh, kind of quantify in my head. It's so drastic. But I know a lot of firms look at this and, and may say, oh, well, those are just numbers from other industries. And when a claimant contacts my firm, you know, I'm the one they want to work with, obviously. And uh, that's not only ridiculous, uh, but it's a pretty dangerous assumption as well. And it does not matter whether – in today's world, a consumer is looking for a dishwasher or a lawyer. I can promise you that the way marketing is generated today, the way technology is presented to them, that everyone researches at least to a very small degree for a product or service, even if it's just for a few minutes. So if someone's contacted you through your site, you better assume that they also fill out the next couple down the line on Google. And it's really a, a chase of who can be first to talk to that, uh, talk to that claimant. And one thing that, that uh, most people don't realize is that now search is 
they're saying that by 2020, search is going to be tw- or uh, voice search, excuse me, is going to be 25 percent of all searches that happen. So, you know, not only do you have to fight to, to make sure that you answer the phone right away, you have to make sure that from a marketing standpoint, your ads are in a place where the Google algorithm are going to actually, you know, dictate your information out to the, the, the person who's requesting it via voice. So, I mean, a lot of things changing and happening. So you want to make sure that these little things you're handling now so that they don't become a problem for your firm as you continue to grow. Absolutely. And uh, on the next two slides, I want to kind of switch to, to leveraging text messaging. I think, you know, this is something that's been pretty prominent, something I speak on a lot, just text messaging and legal just in general. Uh, but I, I, you know, I know there's a lot of firms who either are not doing text messaging at all or at least not leveraging it to the level they could be. And on this first chart, I don't imagine any of these numbers come to a huge surprise to most of you. But to look at these numbers uh, by demographic and the way that they're growing, um, you know, I know that they're going to continue to grow and, and to not be able to capitalize on these different generations of people that are going to continue to use smartphones uh, would certainly be a drastic mistake. I mean, my grandparents have smartphones simply just so they can see their great grandkids' pictures. I mean, they just do. They have smartphones. And as we as generation, I mean, I'm, I'm in my mid-30s. I know 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, most of them have smartphones. It's not like we're just going to leave that technology behind. We're always going to – we may not adopt newer technology as we get older, but we're going to continue using the same technology with uh, with text messaging. Um, and, you know, the next slide here I want to, want to talk about a pretty powerful image that – just shows how effective text messaging is versus email. So I know a lot of firms tend to rely uh, mostly on email still today as opposed to texting. Uh, the two indicators that kind of jumped out on me on this one were 98% of text messages get read, and then on average they're read within three minutes. And you can see how that, um, you know, how that is drastically different versus email. Now, for me on a personal level, you know, I, like all of you, are, are in a business setting. So I certainly read and respond to my emails on my smartphone what I would say pretty quickly versus the average consumer. However, even in a business setting, unlike you know your potential clients who are typically not, you know I still tend to read and respond to text messages much quicker than an email. It's almost like a psychological barrier to entry on my on my iPhone. It's I get it popped up on my home screen. I have to swipe left on it. I have to then read it, respond to it before I do anything else on my phone. And that's I think true for a lot of people. So certainly should be leveraging uh, for text messaging. And then on the next slide, we'll kind of transition from text into e-sign because they're somewhat related. Uh, and even today, I, I still see the majority of law firms either not leveraging e-sign at all or, or certainly using it in a wrong fashion uh, to, to be, you know, losing cases uh, with the way they could be utilizing it. And a, lo- a lot of it, I think firms try to use e-sign, and they, what they do is they replicate their current process of evaluation and signing up a client. And I think asking to a client to open an email and fill out a 15- or 20-page packet is definitely not the most advantageous way to leverage the technology. You're really best served by streamlining that sign-up process with eSign by just sending your retainer. And, and what we find very valuable is if you can streamline that into one or two pages, you can actually stay on the phone with them and get them signed up on literally the very first phone call. Lead comes in, you call out, you get a hold of them, you qualify them, and you sign them up on that first phone call. We do it all the time at our call center. Um, and this you know, certainly takes the potential of losing that client completely off the table. It also allows you to either you know, still meet the client face-to-face to get the rest of the information you need or send a second e-sign packet with those documents, which may be a little longer. You may not be able to stay on the phone with them, and it may take them a little longer to send it back, but you haven't lost that client to another firm. And you can see with these case study numbers the, the drastic difference in turnaround time for a signed-up client with and without e-sign. And, and these are you know, numbers that we see at our, at our call center within our Capsor client database every day. So not using eSign, that, that portion does include both scheduling a consultation and having to send out a mail out packet combined. So if you're not a firm who has to send out mail out packets, you're a local firm, even still your best case scenario is a couple of hours or a half day to get a scheduled meeting, get out and seeing them in a face-to-face uh, to get them signed up. And again, I'm not at all saying that a face-to-face meeting is not valuable. I just uh, think that you can still leverage eSign in a way to help you retain more clients on that very first call. And then leverage that face to face for more of uh, you know the, the the white glove treatments of the client as well. And uh, as you can see, there's a really drastic difference between two to three hours for eSign versus your other options. Um, and we're going to move quickly through this last slide that I have. I know we're we're short on time given our issues at the beginning. Um, I just want to wrap up my piece here to talk about key performance indicators. And we can spend an entire webinar talking about reporting. 
and the metrics you guys should be looking at. But, uh, you know, really we should be able to dissect these metrics for information that should be important to your firm. And you have to be able to quickly dig into those numbers. And one report that we like to provide that I notice a lot of firms do not look at prior to Captor is called the wanted intake reports. So for a conversion percentage, most groups look at their total number of leads for a given marketing campaign, maybe break it down by case type. And then they look at how many they've signed up, and that's how, that's how they get their conversion number. And, and I'm not at all saying that's not a conversion number. It certainly is. I just don't think it's as valuable as taking that same data, understanding how many of those qualified for cases that you actually wanted to sign up. So how many did you send out a sign-up packet for, or schedule a consultation? And then out of that number, how many did you sign up? And that way you can start seeing holes in your intake process. Maybe it's taking too long to get to the person that needs to make the decision. Too many clients are saying they chose another attorney. And in order to understand that, you have to be tracking it. And this certainly isn't a webinar to sell Captora, whether you're using Captora or another system. You need to make sure you actually have that data in front of you. I can't tell you how many firms tell me, oh, we sign up every client we want. Um, if you're saying that, uh, you're either just completely lying to yourself or you just don't have the numbers in front of you and the true data to look at. And it's just a, it's an invaluable statement because it doesn't mean anything. So make sure you're, you're able to track that information. And, um, and, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly, you know, I know wanted to wrap up by saying that I know we're kind of hammering this home today, but I see way too many times firms spend an exorbitant amount of money on their marketing, uh, which you should be, by the way. You need to generate leads, but then they, they very, you know, drastically, uh, you know, have holes in their intake process or just don't spend enough uh, portion of, you know, their, their time or money on an intake application. And uh, it's just wasting money. So uh, with that being said, I'll, I'll give it back to you, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. And that's absolutely true. I mean, doing it right is worth the investment. You know, personal injury lawyers are going to have good campaigns. You're going to have bad campaigns. It's just like anything else. It's the nature of the business. You have to have a proven process in place that's going to allow you to scale um, and, and show you where the holes are so that you can say, hey, this isn't working or this is not valuable. Uh, and this is and this is very valuable and let's continue to work, work down this path. So that's why uh, it's very important to utilize both uh, the Google ads or any marketing platform that you're using uh, and a modern intake solution like Captora. You know, when you're focusing on Google ads, you know, you need to stay focused. All of your ad groups, campaigns, keywords uh, and pages are going to take time uh, to acquire data that's going to be useful you know, it's not going to happen overnight. So don't panic if you don't see the results you want in the first three, four weeks. It, it's going to take 30 days uh, for us to get enough information to make right decisions uh, so that you can continue to grow your firm. So just stay focused, just like you're in court, right? You're going you're gonna to have hiccups and hurdles. As long as you stay focused, everything will work out for the best. We've noticed 75% of all law firms, not personal injury or just family, all law firms are wasting money just trying to find a cheap solution or a new fad. You need to understand that Google's been around for a long time. It's going to continue to grow. It's proven time and time again to generate the highest quality leads for your type of practice and business. And utilizing a modern intake solution um, is really going to benefit your business you know whatever it is that you have to do uh, to make sure that you can qualify the leads we're bringing in is what you need to do and once you have that process in place you need to grow that's at a rate that's comfortable for your business because again we're going to be bringing a lot of people who have some really sensitive topics they want to discuss with you um, and so you're going to have to make sure that you have the time uh, to handle all of those leads so really cool stuff. What do we do next? So there's a couple of things that you can do. You can, we, we are actually going to be offering uh, a free 30 minute session with me. Um, and we'll also give you a 25% off uh, sign up your, uh, for your setup fee. If you decide to, uh, if you decide to use us as your marketing agency, uh, if you want to um, go ahead and start growing your firm, if you believe that in the next 30 days you can handle 30 to 50 new prospects, if you have the means um, to invest in yourself, then please 
uh, go ahead and click the find out now button, schedule some time. Um, we'll go through your current marketing process, any results that you have. We'll determine your next 30 to 60 day goals. Uh, I'll give you five recommendations on how to improve your current landing page or website so that you can generate quality leads even before we start to take over. And then we'll discuss your growth strategy and deliverables over the, those next 30 day goals. Um, and hopefully you guys will take advantage of this. The 25% off uh, will not last uh, long. We're actually going to only be running this uh, promotion through the end of the year. So we hope that you uh, you get engaged and you decide to take the offer. And then the next offer that we have. You want to jump in here, Michael? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. So just, you know, thank you for your guys joining us today and for a thank you through the end of the year for us as well, as Michael said, we're, we're uh, you know, typically with the setup of Captura with integrations and customizations and training on site and all that, you know, we do have initial startup costs. Uh, so for you guys attending today, we'll, we'll offer 25% off that uh, typical startup cost. It is a web-based solution, so we host the environment for you. You can log into any browser, smartphone, tablet. Uh, so with that being a web-based solution, it is a, a SaaS model, um, and you pay week, uh, monthly excuse me, for the uh, active license. So with that, we'll also get the first month uh, for free on Captura. So just as a thank you for you guys, um, you guys attending today. Awesome. And uh, thank you, Denny, for jumping on the call. Uh, you know, I just wanted to tell everyone again, thank you for joining us. Um, you know, we really appreciate your time. We understand that it is very important. Um, and we hope that you got some, some great value out of this conversation. We'll look to hopefully host one after the new year uh, and hopefully with less technical difficulties. If you have any questions at all, uh, please feel free to shoot me an email. My email is on the screen now. Um, I will make sure that uh, they get answered in a timely fa fashion. Uh, any of the slides that you saw today you have questions on or you'd like for yourself, just let me know and I'll make sure I get, I get that over to you uh, as well. Uh, thank you guys again. And uh, I hope that you, you take the opportunity to uh, join me for the 30 minute session. Likewise, thanks everyone. Thank you guys.